Hi guys, Danny from Dance Take. In today's video, guys, we're going to be having a look at thermal compounds. It's going to be a big comparison of all different pieces of thermal compounds. Um, I have many, many here from many, many different manufacturers. So we've got Noctua, uh, Arctic Silver, Cryo Rig. We have Arctic, completely different company. Um, Cooler Master, Slentium PC, and just many generic unbranded ones that are from eBay for a pound or two. We're going to see how a lot of them compare. And then also, since I have also released a video review of this Liquid Ultra from Cool Laboratories, I will include the results for this in the charts, just so you get an idea of how a, a really shitty paste compares to like a really superior paste like this. Although, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this, it just costs quite a bit. Uh, the performance versus just a high-end traditional thermal compound, it's, it's not... This is alright, that's what I'm trying to get across. So I'm going to be... Um, Testing all these with the Cooler Master Hyper 212X, and I'm going to be running all the tests at 4.4 GHz versus the stock 4 GHz, just so we have a little bit more heat, and so we see, in general, just a little bit of, well, just a little bit more variance between all of the temperatures. So hopefully you guys enjoy, and um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So to go over all the compounds, we're going to be testing in more detail. We have the Noctua NZH1, Arctic MX4 and MX2, Cryorig, CP7 and 9, Slantium PC, Pactum PT-1 and Arctic Silver 5. As for some stock pastes that come bundled with processor coolers, we have pastes from Cooler Master, Reven and Scythe. And finally, as for a few cheaper pastes I grabbed off eBay, we have HY880, 610, 510, HC-130 and IDL280, which comes in a small tub. So moving on to the cooler, as mentioned in the intro, we'll be using the upgraded version of the very popular Hyper 212 Evo from Cooler Master, the 212X Cooler. This features a 120mm fan like the original and a single tower array with four copper heat pipes. The cooler is nowhere near high end, however it does represent what most people look to upgrade to or already have in their systems. So moving on to my test methodology, I'll be applying all the pastes to the CPU and we'll, and we'll be running an intensive video render benchmark on the i7-4790K at 4.4GHz at a relatively high voltage of 1.25 just for additional heat purposes. First up we have the application of the very well known pastes. This includes both pastes from Arctic, both pastes from Cryrig, Pactum, PT-1 from Silentium PC and NZH1 from Noctua and Arctic Silver 5. The results were all relatively similar. The best results was from the Noctua NZH1 and Cryrig CP9 at 72 degrees, with the worst result being from the Arctic Silver 5 paste, surprisingly, at 74 degrees. All the results were 2 degrees apart, so all very solid options indeed. Moving on to the stock pastes from Cooler Master, Scythe and Reven, we see more of a gap, we're talking 72.5, 74.5 and 75.5 degrees, all pretty good. Also, but not as good as the pastes from Noctua and Cryorig. As well, the cheaper pastes I mentioned, these are mainly at the bottom of the chart, really showing that you do get what you pay for. I was pretty surprised that the HY510 and HC-130 did so poorly at 79 and 30 degrees C. So finally, as for a comparison, in the intro I mentioned the Liquid Ultra. This paste really requires a specific way to be applied to get the best results. We see 75 degrees from the standard application, 72 degrees from the generous application, and finally for the best results you do want to spread quite a bit onto the CPU itself with the included brush from the pack. All pastes were applied using the method I found to be the best from my thermal paste application comparison video. I can link this in the good old video description. So peeps, there we are, that was my comparison of all different thermal pastes. Hopefully now you know the difference between a good thermal compound, a shitty thermal compound, and you know, I did just throw them results in there for the Liquid Ultra, so you know how that performs. If you want to check out the review of that, feel free. Uh, I think I'll link that in the good old description. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, I personally would recommend a Noctua NCH1 or MX4. I think MX4 is probably the most... Um, that, that's what I use for my thermal tests, it's relatively inexpensive and it's very, very good. Yes, I know it's not as good as, say, the paste from Noctua, that NCH1 is very, very good, and of course the Liquid Ultra, but MX4 in general, I think it just offers the best bang for the buck, and you can buy them in 20 gram syringes, and I like that, because I do test a lot of CPU coolers, and I'm always having to reapply thermal pastes for graphic cards, since I do take the coolers off them things to really show you guys what manufacturers are doing with the cooling solutions on graphic cards. Yes, I do like to include them in my reviews for GPUs. So that's about it guys, thanks for watching. Please feel free to like, comment and also subscribe. I'll have all the links for the thermal compounds that are branded in the description and that'll be about it from me. So catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.